Hello and welcome to another video. Saurabh here and today we will be looking bioassay for proteins, vitamins and antibiotics. So bioassays are different from your chemical assays wherein you use chemicals to find out concentration, purity or potency of any analyte molecule in your sample. But here in bioassay you will be using living cells or maybe tissues or maybe biologically derived molecules to find out the purity or the concentration or the presence or absence of any molecule in your sample. If that sounds interesting, let's see what we have to explore. To give you a brief introduction of bioassay, bioassay are any analytical method wherein you use living cells or tissues or biologically derived molecules like receptors, enzymes or antibodies to determine the concentration potency, purity or the strength of a substance. So what happens is the living cells in response to the presence or absence of a particular substance which you are interested in, the living cell will give you a response with respect to the concentration or the level or the intensity of the presence of that particular molecule. So your assay can be qualitative or quantitative. You can say that your particular analyte molecule is present or absent and you can also measure the concentration and potency of that particular substance. Your method can be direct or indirect. It may be coupled to a chemical reaction so that you can get a particular response which you can measure. For example, the intensity of stimulus can be varied depending upon the doses and depending upon the presence of your molecule of interest, the cell may give you a particular response which you can measure it. Here on your screen are different techniques and methods which you can use for measurement of responses in different bioassays. You can measure through turbidometry which means taking absorbance at different times and measuring the microbial growth or you can also measure the change in the mass of the fungal growth in a bioreactor through gravimetry or you can also measure the change or the increase in the cell count through hemocytometer. Or you can also measure the pH change with respect to the growth in lactic acid bacteria. You can also measure the diameter of the diffusion zone as seen in antibiotic susceptibility test. This zone is a death zone wherein the microbes do not grow. Or you can also measure radioactive signals or fluorescent signals which you get through coupled reaction as seen in ELISA or radioimmunoassay. A very popular test for proteins is the bioassay enzyme linked immunosorbent assay which means ELISA. It will help you detect that is the presence or absence of a particular antigen in biological samples which may be your blood, serum or any biologically derived samples. So your antigen or antibody is immobilized on a solid surface which means it is fixed on a solid surface and depending upon the presence and the amount of your antigen or antibody present in your sample, you will get an antigen antibody complex which may be conjugated to a particular enzyme or fluorophore which you can detect. The basic requirement for this test is a multi well plate wherein you can analyze 96 or 384 samples at the same time. Your results may be qualitative or quantitative. That is, you can detect the concentration as well as the presence or absence of any particular substance. For this, you will require an absorbance measuring device which works on the Beer Lambert's law. The way in which your antigen is captured, the ELISA can be categorized into three different techniques direct ELISA, indirect ELISA, and sandwich ELISA. Indirect ELISA your antigen is captured by a single antibody which is conjugated to an enzyme for detection. In indirect ELISA, your antigen is captured by an antibody which is again captured by a secondary antibody which is conjugated to an enzyme for its de detection. In sandwich ELISA, the antibody is immobilized on a matrix and this antibody will capture your antigen. The antigen is again captured by a another antibody which can be a primary antibody or this primary antibody can have another secondary antibody which will help 
in its detection. Radioimmunoassay is another assay for proteins. It works on the same principle of antigen and antibody complexing. Here the protein antigens are radio labeled with iodine 125. Especially the tyrosine residues in the protein antigen are labeled with iodine 125. The surface is immobilized with the antibodies and is allowed to saturate with the radio labeled protein antigen. The radio labeled antigens, which are also called as hot antigen, will give you a specific amount of radiation, which is called counts per, which is measured in counts per minute. After this is done, you can flood your antigen and antibody complex with a cold antigen, which is not radio labeled. The cold antigen will compete with your hot antigen for the binding site and will cause a decrease in the radiation which is again measured in counts per minute. This step is followed for different concentration of cold antigen which will give you a different decrease in the radiation which is measured in counts per minute. Once you have different data points for the decrease in radiation for different amounts of cold antigen, you may add your sample to get a certain decrease in the radiation. This corresponding decrease in radiation from a standard curve can help you find the concentration of the antigen in your sample. Biomolecular fluorescent complementation is a bioassay used to validate protein-protein interactions within a cell in vivo. If two proteins are suspected to interact with one another inside a cell, they would come in close proximity of each other to do so. The two such test proteins are conjugated to fragments of fluorescent molecules. As shown in the diagram, A and B are fragments of fluorescent molecule attached to two different test proteins. The expected interaction of these proteins would allow the reporter protein to reform in its native three-dimensional structure and would allow the fragments A and B of the fluorescent molecule to come together and fluoresce this fluorescent signal can be detected with the help of an inverted fluorescence microscope. Biomolecular fluorescence complementation has a wide variety of applications. One can record the binding of larger and a smaller subunit of ribosome inside a cell. Also visualization of multiple protein complexes that takes place while signal transduction is also possible. Study of proteins binding to RNA is also possible. Attempts have also been made to quantify the strength of interaction between two proteins by measuring the intensity of the fluorescent signal. Kirby Bauer disk diffusion method is one of the popular bioassay for measuring the susceptibility of bacteria to antibiotics. In this bioassay, a petri plate is poured with agar and allowed to settle and solidify. The surface of the agar is swapped with the test microorganism and allowed to grow and reach a certain confluence. After this, the filter paper discs which are impregnated with certain standardized concentration of antimicrobial agent or antibiotics are placed on the surface as shown in the figure. After certain hours of incubation, a zone of inhibition which represents the death of microorganism is seen. The results are noted as resistant, intermediate and susceptible for different antibiotics depending upon the diameter of the zone of inhibition. Microtiter broth dilution or the broth dilution assay is used for measuring the bactericidal or bacteristatic concentration of antibiotics. As shown in the representation, a gradual increasing concentration of antibiotics solution is prepared. All the solutions are inoculated with a concentration of 10 raised to 4 or 10 raised to 5 colony forming units per ml. All the aliquots are also added with 0.5% of 2,5,3 triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride. This chemical gives a pink coloration depending upon the bacterial growth. The more is your bacterial growth, the darker is your pink coloration. A microplate reader will give you absorbance depending upon the intensity of the pink coloration obtained.
which is corresponding to the bacterial growth. In this way, a solution which gives you no pink coloration is your bactericidal concentration of antibiotic. The left hand diagram is a commercially available e-test which is a strip which has a gradual increasing concentration of antibiotics. The strip is used for antibiotic susceptibility testing. After placing the strip on an actively growing bacterial culture on an agar plate, a zone of inhibition in the form of ellipse is seen as here in the diagram. The corresponding point to the narrowest portion of the ellipse will give you your bactericidal concentration or minimum inhibition concentration. The right hand side is a comparison of the plates after a certain hour of incubation. The chemical used here is resazurin which is reduced by dehydrogenase enzymes which are present in the bacterial cells. The more your bacterial cells, the more is the enzyme produced and greater is the amount of the resazurin chemical used in the assay reduced. In this way, there is a change in the color from blue to light pink or red. Impedance-based fast antimicrobial susceptibility test is one of the novel methods for determining the concentration of antibiotics which is able to kill your cells. This method utilizes microfluidic device wherein your cells are suspended in an electrolyte solution and as the cells pass one by one through a small channel of diameter equal to the order of microns, this method measures the changes in impedance as the cells pass one by one through the small channel. The electrodes are placed along the circumference of the channel and as the cells pass by, there is a change in the impedance of the solution. The impedance is measured at frequencies 40 MHz and 5 MHz. And as you can see, the, di the graph is plotted with respect to the impedance at 40 MHz and impedance at 5 MHz. And you will get a fingerprint region as shown by the red contour region in the diagram left hand side. And if your cells are exposed to a certain chemical, then the cells will be seen outside the region of the contour. In the graph, each dot represents a cell. In this way, the number of cells found outside of the contour region can determine the concentration needed to kill those cells. In this way, you can find out the best antibiotic concentration, which will help you gain a specific sterilization which you require. Microbiological assay is available for measuring the concentration of vitamin B3 and B9. Here the microbial growth is monitored at wavelength 560 nanometer to give the highest or maximum optical density. In this way the highest or maximum optical density is measured in presence of different concentration of vitamins. Lactobacillus plantarum and Lactobacillus rhamnosus are two different bacteria used in this assay. Once you have the different data points, that is the optical density at 560 nanometer, in presence of different concentration of vitamins, you can plot your standard curve. And now you can monitor the growth of bacteria in presence of your sample and find out the corresponding concentration by taking the optical density. Along the left hand side is the standard curve of optical density versus different concentration of vitamins. The y axis has the maximum growth which is measured in terms of optical density at 595 nanometer in presence of different concentration of vitamins. In this way you can find out the unknown concentration of vitamin in your sample by measuring the optical density corresponding to the growth of the microorganism. One such bioassay for vitamins is the rat assay. The rat assay method is used for vitamin B2 and what is actually happening here is that your male albino rats are provided with different doses of riboflavin. As you can see the number of rats are divided into different groups of nine and each group is provided with a dose of riboflavin corresponding to three grams per day or 6 grams or 9 grams or 15 grams per day 
and you have to measure the increase in weight over a period of three weeks that is each group of rats will have different dose of riboflavin per day and you have to measure the increase in the weight or the increase in the gain in the weight for three weeks and this is plotted in the diagram as shown in the right hand side the growth increments due to vitamins are linear between three and nine micrograms per day from the standard curve you can find out the micrograms of riboflavin fed to the rat by the increase in the gram weight per day in a rat these methods are not used nowadays but is also very useful in understanding its principle and the way it works the prime objective of this video was to provide you with a brief of the bioassays and the use of cells and living tissues in analytical techniques if you wish for more such content please subscribe to the channel and also do visit the following links given as references for detailed information of each bioassay till then see you in the next fun content video the prime object